God is waiting on the warrior in us to comfort others. God is waiting on the warrior in you. He's waiting on the warrior in me to comfort others. As a, as a counselor, I deal with a, a lot of people that are grieving, whether it be the death of a loved one, whether it be a traumatic event that's taken place in their life. And they just need comfort. And I want to I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are in trouble. We will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us through His comfort. Even when we are weighed down with troubles, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comforted, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same things we suffered. We are confident that as you share in our suffering, you will also share in the comfort God has given us. We thank you all to know, dear brothers and sisters, about the trouble that we went through in the province of Asia. We were crushed and overwhelmed beyond our ability to endure, and we thought we would never live through it. In fact, we expected to die, but as a result, we stopped relying on ourselves and fully relied on God, who can raise the dead. And He did rescue us from mortal danger, and He will rescue us again. We have placed our confidence in Him, and, we will, and, we, and He will continue to rescue us. And you are helping us by praying for us. Then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for our safety. You know, when you comfort someone else, not only does that comfort them, that comforts the person that they will eventually comfort that is going through tough times. God does comfort us when we're going through our trials and tribulations. Sometimes He'll comfort us through a family member, sometimes through a friend, sometimes through a good book, sometimes through music that we're listening to, sometimes through our counselors that we may go to, or a pastor through his preaching or teaching. But God longs to comfort you so that you will comfort others. God is waiting on the warrior in us to comfort others. Everybody's hurting. Everybody's hurting. If we could read people's thoughts, if we could read their minds, their hurts, you know, we would be, it, we would probably start crying because so many people, <clears throat> so many people are suicidal and you don't even realize it. So many people feel hopeless. So many people feel so broken or ugly or unwanted or, or stupid. They, they, they beat themselves up. They feel so bad about themselves. We need to comfort them. We need to remind them that they're created in the image of God. We need to remind them about the promises of God. We need to just be God's love for them. But we must comfort them. You know, I want to share it with you from, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting with verse 16. It says, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them that will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will last forever. You know, our bodies, they, they are, they're, they're, they're dying. Our earthly vessels are dying. And, and we don't get me wrong, we do need to exercise and we do need to eat healthy and we do need to take vitamins and herbs and you know medicines when necessary, but we're still dying. And so with that, there, there can come heartache and there can come you know grieving because not all, our bodies are dying and eventually they die. But our spirit, it is being renewed day by day. And, and God's desire is that, our, that we would grow in our relationship with Him, in our intimacy with Him, and that, that we would become you know, just more and more one with Him, and that that will comfort us as we see the hardships of life, 
as we deal with our own bodies and the issues that our body faces and the, the people that we love around us, you know? And so God wants to comfort you through renewing your spirit, renewing your mind, through strengthening you to be, to be a comfort and a strength to others. It's, it's interesting because for a lot of people, they, they aren't comforted because they don't have a good relationship with their families. And, um, and for a lot of people, they don't have believers, Christians in their families. And, and, but I have to remind you of something because in Mark chapter 3, starting with verse 31, it says, Then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. They stood outside and sent word to him to come out and talk with him. There was a crowd sitting around Jesus, and someone said, Your mother and brothers are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, Who is my mother? Who, who are my brothers? Then he looked at those around him and said, Look, these are my mothers and my brothers and my sisters. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. For some of you, you need to be reminded of this, that you're not receiving the comfort that you need because maybe you're turning to your own blood relatives, that, but they're not your, your family and God. They, they're not believers. They're not, um, they're, they're, they're not of the same faith. I'm more of a family member to some of you, that I've, and I've never met you, but yet I'm more of a family member than some of your own blood relatives, according to what Jesus just said. Because... It's those of you, the, the people around you that, that are seeking to do God's will. They still mess up every day. They still sin every day. But they're seeking to do God's will. And they are, they are a believer in Christ Jesus. That's your family. That's who you need to be around to comfort you the most. That's why church is so important. It's supposed to be a hospital to the sick. It's supposed to be a counseling center to the broken. It's supposed to be a a gym to get you trained spiritually and emotionally and mentally. You know, it, it's, it's supposed to be all those things to, to be able to comfort you. You know, um, I was, I've got four children, and I was teaching um, my four-year-old recently how to ride a bike, and um, she went from a tricycle at three, she just turned four, so we upgraded to a bike with training wheels. And, and she's so cute because... She wanted, she wanted Daddy to help her, be right by her side, to just comfort her as she's trying to ride. She's so scared. She just needed me to just stand right there with her and comfort her. And then it's so cute because then as she starts pedaling and it's a flat surface or it's going up just a little bit, she's like, I'm okay, Daddy. I can do it. I can do it, Daddy. I'm okay. I don't need you, Daddy. I don't need you. And then within 30 seconds, she's screaming, Daddy, help. Daddy, help. And so I just, I'm right beside her, by the way. And so I just put my hand on her shoulder and I comfort her. And that hand being on her sh shoulder just comforts her so much to know that, okay, I, I, he, my daddy's right there. Your, your heavenly daddy wants you to know that he's right there every step of the way to comfort you, even when you don't realize he's there. It's also very important that we put our hand on other people's shoulders or on their back or take their hand and just give them that touch of comfort when they're going through a trial, a tribulation in their life. It's not always a death. Sometimes they lost their job. Maybe they've lost a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Um, you know, they've broken up or a marriage has, has ended or there's a separation or there's just something heavy on a person's heart. They just need to be comforted. We, we don't look at comfort as, as for what it really is. Comfort is a weapon of God. When you comfort others, you are... First of all, you're ministering to Jesus because Jesus says, you know, what you do for the least of these, you do for me. You know, anytime we bless someone else, we're blessing Jesus. Anytime we comfort someone else, we're comforting Jesus. But comforting someone is a weapon of God. And by not comforting a person, it could lead to things getting a lot, a lot worse. You know, I, um, I know this sounds strange, but I, I felt led to, to share it. Um, I have my, my, my doctorate, my PhD in counseling, and I'm not telling you this to boast in me. I just need you to, to know something. Um, after I got my bachelor's degree in counseling, I decided I was going to go to grad school and get my master's in it and then eventually get my doctorate. Well, where I went to grad school, 
Um, the director of it is just someone I respect so much, love so much, made such a difference in my life. Knew, I've known him, knew him for years before I even went to grad school. And uh, so there was, there was only one grad school I wanted to go to. And, um, and that's the one he was directing and directing the program. And I remember, I mean, we're, we're friends. You know, we went hiking together, fishing together, uh, just hung out together laughing. So we're friends. So it's not that I, I was taking advantage of that, saying, well, I'll definitely get in, because I had did all the steps to get into grad school. Everything that I had to do, I did, but I didn't apply anywhere else. So when I went to go to my interview um, to get accepted into grad school, you can imagine how surprised I was when my friend, who I truly respect and had did everything required to get in, looks me right in my eyes and says, I'm sorry, Chad, but I can't let you in the program. And I'll be honest with you, I started laughing. I thought he was joking because we joked so much. I just knew he was joking. But when I didn't see a smile, I knew he wasn't joking, and I started crying, and I didn't understand. I was, I was even upset. I, hadn't, I, I didn't even apply to any other grad school, you know? So I was like, wait a minute. I didn't apply anywhere else. It, I, now I'm in trouble. Now I've got to wait another whole year, and I was, I was upset, and as I'm crying, I asked him why. Why would he not let me in this program? And he took a notebook pad, and he started drawing a picture, and I didn't know what he was doing. I just I trusted him, so I, I, I waited. And then he flipped the picture around, and it was a picture of, he said, of me holding up the world. And he said, this is you. You try to save the world. He said, you take everybody's problems on your shoulders, and you carry their burdens. And he said, I'm not going to sit back and watch you get crushed under the world. I'm not going to sit back and watch this kill you. He said, there's only one Savior, and his name's not Chad, it's Jesus. Whew. I needed to hear that. But I looked him in his eyes and I said, Doc, I love you. I said, but you know me. I'm, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to find a way to get into a, a school, a grad school, and I'm going to go on to do this. And I said, why don't you be the one that trains me and teaches me how to balance comforting others but not enabling them, comforting others but not taking on their burdens like I'm Jesus or something. I said, you train me. You teach me how not to do that. I'll be on probation. Whatever you got to do, kick me out if I don't do it right. And you know, after, after talking about it for a long time, he, he did decide that he would do that. And he let me in the grad program. And two years later, I graduated from that program and then went on eventually to get my doctorate. And I will be honest with you, through the years I have slipped back and forth and crossing that boundary of comforting too much to the point that it, it does hurt me. But he did help me in so many ways to understand that there's a difference between comforting and enabling. There's a difference between comforting someone and taking on that burden. See, only Jesus can truly bear our burdens. I can comfort you by praying for you. I can comfort you by giving you scripture. I can comfort you by giving you counsel. I can comfort you by serving and blessing you in some way. But to take that problem on and attach it to me or to, to, to handle everything for you would be me enabling you. So we must learn to balance. But some people have the excuse, well, hey, look, I'm not going to enable you and so I don't, I don't know what else to do, so I'm just going to walk away. And doesn't take any time to comfort no. That, do you know what that is? That's no difference than the story of the Good Samaritan. In the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus told, a man had been beaten up and robbed. And two different spiritual people passed by the Good Samaritan. I mean, sorry, two different people passed by this Jew who had been beaten up and robbed. Two different spiritual people. And they don't help him. They don't take time to comfort him, to mend his wounds, to do anything to bless him. But then a Samaritan walks by. And if you know anything about that culture, that biblical time, the Samaritans and Jews, they hated each other. There was a, so for this Samaritan to reach out and to love that Jew was, was powerful. He took time to comfort him. So many times as religious people, we're too busy to comfort other people or we're too, we think we're too high and mighty to comfort this person over here who's broken and so... And, going through so much stuff that 
by not comforting, we really show our heart to where we're at in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. By not comforting, we tell on ourselves in the lack of intimacy that we have with the Lord. God is waiting on the warrior in you, in me, in us to comfort others. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are a God of comfort. I, Father God, I thank you that you comfort us in our time of trouble so that we will be a comfort to others in need. Father, I thank you for the just showing us that comforting others is a weapon of yours and that it can be used to, to save lives, even save souls, to bring people to you as their Savior. Father, I pray your blessing over anyone that hears these words and puts them into practice for your glory. In Jesus' holy name, amen.